everybody, this is Randy with Carchaeology, and I want to introduce a new project to all of you folks. I've got this 1971 Volkswagen Westfalia camper that we just pulled back here to the lab. It's been sitting since 1999, and the goal here is to get this up and running and cleaned up and try to make the best out of what we've got. Now, 1971 was a, a pretty good year when it came to the VW bus. In fact, it's one of the favorites of the bay window buses, or at least of the early bays, as they call them, um, because it was the last year for the upright 1600cc engine that's similar to what's in the Volkswagen Beetle, and it was the first year for disc brakes on the front. And that's kind of a neat combination. Number one, it's going to stop better. It's going to be a bit safer to drive. And number two, it's very easy and cheap to service. The Type 4 engine that was introduced in 1972 uh, is a little more complex. Parts are a little more expensive. And as the bay windows got a little newer, different things changed as far as carburation to fuel injection and so on and so forth. Uh, so 71 is kind of a golden year. People really love these buses. I am one of them. And this particular one is really in pretty decent shape. It was found in a Southern California uh, estate. Uh, the gentleman that owned it had passed away. It was kind of his dream bus that he never got to. And unfortunately, that happens quite a bit. Uh, so our goal is to get to it and to make it into uh, the bus perhaps that he would have dreamed, or at the very least, something that we can use and enjoy here. Now, a lot of people can put camper beds and things like that in different VW buses and call them a camper. But if it's a genuine, especially a West Folly, it's got the tags to show it. Uh, these right here on the passenger side wheel arch are one of the main pieces. And then there's also a tag usually inside down there at the bottom of the cabinetry. Now, this still has the original Westy camper interior in it, which is great. Uh, it is missing the ice box back there. That's the only part that isn't there. Um, but it's got the headache rack, the closet. It's got the big flip-out bed, the fold-up table, and the little jump seat. Uh, the interior here in the front is a little cooked, held together with some duct tape. Um, but it does appear original. And one of the best parts about this particular bus is just how solid it is. Now, yeah, there's a little bit of crustiness going on here, thanks to the design of this waffle-type uh, backing on the rubber mat, which is perfect for holding water. Um, but fortunately, this really isn't too bad. You know, a little bit of crispy stuff that we can clean out, perhaps one little hole here that we'll have to do some patching on. But these things are notorious for having the floors completely rotted out of them. Other areas where rust can occur is here around the seat belt mounts. Moisture holds in here, and that can be a pretty bad uh, spot for rust. And then on bay window buses, probably the most common spot for any sort of rust is along that window edge. And you can see this does have some rust going on here. Now, it doesn't look too bad. I don't see any huge holes. But if we open this up, there may be some damage underneath there. So we'll see over time whether I end up pulling the windshield out and really doing proper repair there, or if it's something that we can just kind of work with, clean up, and try to keep it from going any further. Now, another common spot for things to start looking nasty is this grill across the front. I don't know what it is about these, but uh, you know, perhaps the moisture can really build in up around all of that, but they always look a little crispy. And one of the things that's going to make a huge difference with the overall appearance of the car is once we pull that out, clean that up, maybe even repaint it, and then polish up the nose. Uh, it's a focal point. You're drawn right to that piece. So the cleaner it is, the better. Another focal, focal point, of course, is the emblem. And this one has an earlier emblem. This is an emblem off of a split-screen bus, 67 or older, if you're looking at the German stuff. So it's larger than it should be. It's kind of cute, but it's not quite right. So I'd like to put the original 71 style emblem on there, and then I can probably sell this uh, split screen emblem for a fair bit more than the other one would cost. Um, there is some body damage on the car. Uh, it looks like this is punched in a little bit here. You know, door closes just fine, but that's a pretty good dent right there. It's gonna be interesting to see if we can pop that out. 
Um, I may try some of it myself, or I may get one of the paintless dent removal guys to come out and try to work that and see if we can get any action on it. I always like using those guys um, because they really know how the metal works. A lot of body guys tend to just get in there and start banging on stuff and grinding and filling. Um, but the paintless dent removal guys understand how the dents are made and they also understand how the dents come out. There is a little bit of rust along the bottom edge here. Uh, that's something that we may attend to depending on how far we get with the project. Uh, it's got the original wheels on it. It looks like original paint on those wheels. Tires are pretty old, but they are holding air. Now on the interior, it's really not too bad. It's a shame it's missing the ice box because the, the ice box is a cool piece. There's usually a dry sink up here on the top as well, with a little water tank back behind it, and that's gone, which is a bit of a drag, but it does give you some more room to hang out in here. And, uh, and it's neat to see that this is original stuff. So some of this we'll clean up. We'll see how good it can look. Some of it needs to be redone. Maybe redo those front seats. I don't know. I always start with cleaning first. I want to clean up what's there and see how nice it is. And then I make a decision as to whether it's something that can be preserved or needs to be restored. Um, I do see the original privacy curtain for the front window here. Uh, I'd love to find some more of this material to put the right curtains back in here. I also spy the kid's cot up here at the top. This is a cool little canvas cot that goes across the front uh, compartment here. If you look over in the corner there, that little bracket right there, and then back here, there's a bracket as well. And so that little canvas cot stretches right across there. It's perfect for the kids. It's also perfect to put your stuff, your sleeping bags and things like that, while you're hanging out in the back. Uh, so we'll be popping that in there, making sure it fits and that it's not ripped up as well. Now, mechanically, I was told that this engine was rebuilt. In fact, we've got receipts that show that it was rebuilt in uh, 1999. Now, it's been sitting ever since. I see some funky wiring going on there. We'll have to clean through that. Obviously, obviously I have to go through the fuel system and everything like that make sure that everything is good i haven't tried to turn the engine yet um does look like it's got some oil in it that doesn't look too bad uh and my experience with old vws is that they will usually run to some level so it's going to be a fun one to revive this for the first time and uh you know drive it because that's what we do now the dashboard is actually in really nice shape on this bus, which is uh, pretty amazing for something found here in California. They're really known to crack in the hot sun. And this one seems to be pretty good. It's got all the levers for the heater controls, which is also something that commonly bails out pretty quick. Steering wheel doesn't look too bad. There's even the original decal here for uh, drive only with the sliding door locked there although it's kind of fun to drive them without that uh and in the glove box we actually found some cool stuff there is uh the original owner's manual um which is fun there's a service manual here as well uh and this shows some of the history of the bus as to where it was where it was first sold uh, it looks like it was first sold in reno nevada uh, it looks like the odometer was changed at one point there back in 1973. Um, but it's cool to flip through this, see that original selling dealer. And then also in here, you'll see uh, service stamps uh, that kind of show where it's been and what it's done. So obviously Reno, Nevada being the delivery dealership. Looks like there's been some road trips here. I see Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Anchorage, Alaska, and then back to Reno, Nevada. So that's quite an adventure. Uh, here's Kingsport, Tennessee, um, and then Reno, Nevada, and then it kind of fades away there, which is pretty common. There's not a lot of these buses that have a service record that continues on much past the first 50,000 miles I've seen. Uh, and looking at the odometer here, we're at about 71,000 miles, which may or may not be original to the bus. Uh, but we'll investigate that a little further as time goes on. So that's a quick walk around of the 71 West Folly Camper. 
Again, we always like to name our vehicles, the ones that we work on, and we haven't put one together for this, so I am open to suggestions. Please make a comment down below, and please subscribe to watch the revival of this wonderful little VW bus. We have dug it up. The next step is to drive it, and then to clean and preserve it and see how nice we can make it without going crazy with a full restoration. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Please subscribe. Keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye-bye.